late, I'm late, I'm late. Hello, so my plane leaves in 75 minutes. I'm heading to the Arctic to do some cycling in February. I mean, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Would you like to join me? Then let's go. Sorry, let's go. So first thing I like to do when I arrive in the Arctic is I like to pull out my phone and then just go onto the location on the map and just see where I am because um, I don't know, it's something crazy about being this far north. It feels like I shouldn't be here, but I am. If you are further north than me right now, leave a comment. Tromsø, which is the furthest north city in the world and it's about minus seven eight right now and it's blowing a blizzard i thought it'd be a good idea if we did a little bit of winter cycling okay yeah i'm gonna take a ferry to the lingen alps okay so it's about a two and a half hour ferry journey to the Lingen Alps, which is this beautiful area. It's like a peninsula, which is about 90 kilometers away from Tromsø. So we're gonna stay in a little wooden cabin, a uh, little old wooden cozy cabin, and then we're gonna cycle back to Tromsø tomorrow. But my hand is about to drop off, guys, because uh, I can't hold this camera with my gloves on. So we're gonna have to say goodbye. And as you can see, it's snowing pretty hard now. So the golden rule when bikepacking is if you're doing something new, always do a test trial. Go out for one day and test everything out and see how it works. Because there's so much you learn in just 24 hours. And what I'm about to learn is quite phenomenal actually. Oh my god, this is epic. All right, we're off, we're off. I think we've got about 15 minutes to the very least. Madness. <laughs> Absolutely madness. What am I doing? Excuse me. Hi. Do you know where I am? I'm looking to the ferry terminal to take a boat to where the Lincoln Alps. Do you know where the ferry terminal is? Is it that way or? No, I am not sure. You can. All right, 10 minutes and I'm lost. I was the last person on the boat, I just made it. And for the two and a half hours I sat there, I was a little bit apprehensive about the whole trip. I didn't know what to expect, but at the same time, I was excited. I'd never done this before. It's an adventure. So the minute I got off the boat, you realize straight away that 
everything becomes hard work. Whether it's putting on your helmet, trying to clip in to your pedals, or trying to get your phone out and find out where the heck you're supposed to go. The minute your hand is exposed to minus 15 temperatures, it just starts to hurt after around 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and after a minute you're just dying to put your glove back on. So everything you have to do really, really quickly. It was about 15 kilometers cycling in the dark to this cabin. By the time I got there, there was no one about. The cabin itself was locked, and I was like, oh my God, you know, what am I gonna do here? I managed to find a number on a window and phoned the owner and he told me there was another more modern cabin just around the corner and that was open and I could stay there instead. Thank God. The wind howled all night. Good morning, and welcome to the Arctic. You want to check it out? Come on then. Minus 11 right now outside, minus 11, but the sun is shining. Well, it will be when the sun comes up, and right now it's pretty still and stable, so not bad conditions, because last night there was some sort of storm going on, and the just wind was blowing from all directions, and I thought, oh my god, I hope it's not like this tomorrow. So fingers crossed we're going to have a nice day cycling back to Tromsa and hopefully the views along the way are going to be spectacular. Ah, that's the only time I'm doing that, okay? Alright, good morning. So this is the Lingen Alps. As you can see, I don't have my normal bike with me today. I'm renting a bike from Tromsa Outdoors, which is a company in Tromsa, funny enough. Uh, they do a lot of amazing uh, rentals with bikes and ski equipment and lots of other stuff as well. I got my Apogee 17 litre saddlebag here. Of course, I don't need 17 litres. I'm not camping. Uh, so it's just got a few extra warm clothing in there and my electric charger because I'm going with electric. Yeah, it's pretty amazing actually. It's the first time I've cycled an electric bike properly. I have been around the town on an electric bike before, but never out in the wilderness like this. So yeah, it's pretty incredible to have a battery, how easier it makes it is, especially going uphill. I don't really know much about this. This is a higher fat six fat bike, huge monster tires here, absolutely huge with little spikes on them as well to prevent me from uh, slipping on the ice. It's an aluminium frame, I know that. And it weighs an absolute ton. It's so heavy, this bike. What's important is that we've got an epic adventure, guys. An epic adventure today. We're going over there, past the mountains, through the valley, and back to Tromsø. All in the beautiful Arctic Norway. so hard to prepare because I think there's a lot of ice on the cleats and on the uh, 
Yes, I'm in. All right, we're on the road, guys. We're on the road. What a day, what a day. I am so lucky. It could be fun. It could be a blizzard right now. Well, guys, the sun is coming up. It's a winter wonderland here. I've got this kind of morning light going through the valley here, guys. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. It's hard to imagine where I am right now, to be When I was creating this route, I mapped out three to four places where I knew I'd have some sort of shelter when I wanted to eat or just to have a small break. And this is so, so important to be aware of where these shelters are. So this is when we find out if my water has frozen. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, perfect. So is this like a insulated water bottle and doing the job right now because it's preventing the water from freezing. So it's a tradition in Norway to always have a photo of the king in your toilet, just above the toilet. We're keeping up with traditions here and we've also got the queen as well. So looking good there, looking good guys. Now there is a famous lake over here, right? which you can walk to obviously not today but in summertime and it's like one of the most bluest lakes in the world it's actually called like the blue lake and it's supposed to be absolutely stunning and last time i was here i cycled past it and i didn't even know it existed and i was ugh, devastated afterwards so next time i come back in the summer i'm going to check this out so if you're ever in this area in the summer go to the blue lake it's supposed to be like incredible all right we uh, got a ferry to catch so we've got to crack on um, pretty keeping warm apart from my toes are really cold right now but I, I've got an extra pair of socks so I'll bang them on on the ferry I think and uh, see what happens but uh, my hand right now is just like freezing like it's been a glove without a glove for a minute and it's just <laughs> freezing up so onwards we go Earth heard the loud and saw them sound, and started from her utmost bound. And darkness on his airborne car spread his black wings and fled afar. The dun clouds opened with a fright and hailed the burst of life and light. Tis light, tis light, the mountains rung. Tis light, tis light, the valleys sung. The stars beheld its dawning bright, the spears confessed the Godhead's might, while nature's universal voice proclaimed aloud, Rejoice! Rejoice! You know, for six weeks a year, the sun does not rise above the horizon here. I always wonder what it must be like that first day when the sun reappears. How does that make you feel? Incredible. Incredible stuff guys, incredible stuff. It's just a fjord and then the mountains just come straight up. Yeah, and I mean, just look at the sun. Just like riding into the sun like this. Ah, oh, it's when it's so low down. I mean, it's just, it's so magical. So I just got to plow onto the ferry really. And uh, we go from there. We're going this way, guys. Into the light. It leaves in about 45 minutes. So not too, too much weight around. And there is a little, uh, waiting room here in this hut, so hopefully that's got some heat in. So we're rocking it. Come 
minus 11, fresh air. 20 degrees, not so fresh air. Which would you choose? Let me know in the comment box. Closed until open again. Well, that makes sense. Road 91. If you've watched my top five Arctic road videos, which you should do, which is like up here somewhere, um, Road 91 was number two. And here I am, back on Road 91, but this time in the winter. So uh, hopefully, it's gonna look just as good in winter as it did in summertime. Oh, I'm sorry. How rude of me, talking with my mouth full. Zero wind, and the sun is shining. How lucky am I? We're going to cycle directly into that light and chase it all the way back to Tromsø. Good to know, most ferry journeys are free for cyclists in Norway. The Lingen Alps is one of Norway's least known mountain ranges, but once you've been here, you will never forget it. guys, fond memories. I was here back a few summers ago and I did cycle to Ulta. At this point, the sun is setting and the temperature is dropping and it's going to below minus 15 now. And I'm really starting to struggle to breathe a little bit and the buff is not helping at all. But without it, your whole face freezes off. Oh, you don't get that in Australia, do you? Luckily, my last pit stop was just around the corner. This foot is frozen. This left one is fine. Oh, this one here. So, trying to warm it up now. The rest of the body, all good. So, it'll be dark in less than an hour. I've got to head on to the E6 now for eight kilometers, eight, nine kilometers, and then want a nice side road back to Tromsø but we're not going to get back until after dark so let's see how it goes. The E6 is the main road in the north of Norway and it can be busy in places but I have got the most amazing powerful lights on my bike by this company called Magic Shine and I'm going to do a review on these lights because they were really really good to use so look out for that in the description below. Oh, good times, good times. I remember this road. Here we go, side to Chomsa, cycling side. And there's a mini zoo that way, but we'll check that out another day, shall we? Hey, great, baby. 
Oh, yeah, baby. Look at this. Look at this. Seeing the sun rise and it set in just six hours is pretty special. So a little update, 15 k from Tromsø. Um, I'm just trying to do one last drone shot, but the battery now is like way too cold and I've been waiting five minutes. It hasn't warmed up yet, so we'll see. The sun has set, but we've still got this kind of like twilight going on now, so it's really, really beautiful. Uh, I'm just gonna crack on and get the last part done now. <sighs> Come on, drone. I'm not sure if I'll get a drone shot here. <laughs> Honestly, I wish you could pick it up on the go, bro. We made it. We made it. has frozen. The idea is to get people commuting with the nature to getting more skills and just appreciating you know the natural surroundings that we have around us here. Um, it's been growing over time, 2016. Come on, John, work, goddammit, work. <laughs>